everyone. Greetings from around the world and thank you for being with us today. Here we are at Quantum Nurse Freedom International live stream and our guest today is special for me in my eyes because he's a doctor and he's also a lawyer. And in during these current times, it seems like a lot of uh, motivation that I've had is to be able to learn more, educate myself more when it comes to laws, legalities, proceedings, jurisdictions, common law, all these things that will make me uh, feel that I, I am equipped, I have the tools, I have the resources to empower myself and empower others. So, um, and how I get to know him or how he was introduced to me is from another guest when I was asking about um, private membership association. And so he referred me, I said, you have to check this out. And so he gave me this website, how to win in court without a lawyer. And he said, you better just invite him. I said, okay. So with this title, how to win in court, it already feels like uh, it's very empowering. So I'd like to welcome Dr. Frederick David Graves, right? And he is, he's, he is a doctor and at 39, he also became a lawyer and or he entered the law school. And now he has this website and he has courses to help those who feel like they have some, they, they needed to know more so that they can be empowered. And so welcome, Welcome to Freedom International live stream, Dr. Graves. And thank you very much. It's wonderful to be here. So as I was, as I mentioned, Dr. Graves, even for myself, it feels like when I'm driving, yes, just a little example, when I'm driving and then if I, if, if there's a, a cop behind me, even if they are not giving a signal, you know, like they're not after me, but it makes me nervous already. Okay. And then when I meet lawyers, then they start talking about certain things. It feels like I get a little intimidated. However, growing up in the Philippines, I grew up with a lot of lawyer friends and I find myself so interested to know the proceedings. And sometimes I would even um, attend court session just to see how my friend does it or and I had also a a friend who became a judge so one of those things that he always said is make sure when you're writing grace don't write too much and don't talk too much so <laughs> said, because sometimes when you have those things then it will get you so but then this course I wanted you to please start in how did you really end up having this course and all going to be a lawyer when you initially is a doctor? Well, I read a lot of old books. Uh, I walked into a, this is a little bit of a story here, but I walked into a library, a, a county library years ago, having not been in a library since high school, don't even know why I went there. It was peculiar. It was late in the afternoon and I was on my way from downtown Atlanta and something prompted me to go to this library after years and years and years of not being in a library. And I, I walked in, there was no one there. Big, long library tables and big, tall stacks of books. And it was one of the old libraries that had the ladder that moves around on the, on the wheels, you know. And the blinds had been pulled down on the west side of the of the room uh, to keep the sun out. And there was a pinhole in one of the blinds. You're not going to believe this story, but um, I've told it a hundred times. And there was a little bit of dust in the air. And so the light of the afternoon sun pouring through that pinhole in the blind, believe it or not, shone distinctly on a two-volume leather bound gold inlaid title set of books and i don't know i think anybody who uh who encountered that would at least be curious what those books were about 
and they were an encyclopedia of an ancient knowledge. Mm. And I pulled them down and I started reading them. And I went back to the library night after night after night until I had read both volumes. And then they introduced me to other books that I read. Uh, I read some of the Harvard classics. I read Franklin, Woolman, Penn, Marcus Aurelius, George Washington, uh, just pain. And, and I, I, I just be, I just couldn't get enough of it. And later on, I, I met a man, his name was Frederick Redden. He's passed away recently. He was a good friend. And this was 1997. And he and I had talked about the things that I had learned in these old books. Mm. And by now I'm, I, I, well, I, I guess I skipped a section here. I, they, the, the books in, encouraged me to want to go to law school so I could, believe it or not, so I could get a, uh, the opportunity to write about the things and teach people about the things that I had learned. And so Fred said, we have to get you a website. Mm. And I said to Fred, Fred, what's a website? This is 1997. Mm -hmm. He said, he, he, so he explained what it was, and we started out with a website called, here it is, jurisdictionary.com. And I later got, got the registered, federal registered trademark for it. And then later it, it became howtowinincourt.com. And it started out very small, very insignificant, but some of my background, you see, uh, had taught me that the people perish for lack of knowledge. Uh, that, as one of the writers said, you know, the, the Bastille was, was built by the French people. Uh, and I learned so much from these old books that I ended up with a different slant on the law when I, when I got my law degree and I got my law degree in 1986, actually in 1985, I was admitted to the bar in 1986. And then in 1997, I started the website with the idea that people have power. They don't know they have. Let's say that again. Everyone who's going to hear this broadcast has power to change their world for the better, but they don't know they have the power. They already have it, but they don't know they have it and they don't know how to use it. So that has been the mission of the jurisdictionary and the how to win in court .com course for 25 years to give the people the power they need to use the courts instead of waiting to, to elect some another politician to lie to us, to use the courts to force people to do things that should be done and to stop doing things that should not be done and to change the law and to change the world by changing the law. And, and, and this is for the little guy. For the first time in the history of the world, the little people now who could not have afforded a lawyer 30 years ago, you don't need a lawyer. 30 years ago, you couldn't do anything without a lawyer because you didn't have this course and you didn't have the ability to access the law. Uh, real quickly, I put this up here a moment ago. You're looking at the official New Jersey rules of evidence. Here's, here's, here's the one on privileges, and you, we all know about privileges. You see, privilege of the accused, self-incrimination, lawyer-client privilege. You know, a lawyer can't tell somebody. But there it is. It's in black and white. And, and you didn't have to buy a book. You didn't have to go to law school. You just, you have the Internet. And none of this was possible 30 years ago. And so you take the ability now to look up the law, find out what the, this is the actual law. You can go right into court and argue with the judge. You can say, well, your honor, 
New Jersey Rules of Evidence 504, the lawyer client privilege says, and you can tell him what it says, and he can't argue with you because you know what it says, and you can get you will get your way. So you take the ability to find the law and you couple that with my course that makes it easy to learn how to use the law. And now this this that started way back when in that library, when I began to realize that it is possible for a population to run its government and, and stop the evil. But the arena for that, or as Blackstone called it, the venue of the power of the people is in the courts, not in the voting booth. The power of the people is in the courts, but the people don't know that. But with the help of folks like you, they're learning. I had another this morning. I was on, on another program this morning for some people up in Toronto. And another many thousands of people are learning about this each week. And so we're getting the idea out there that no longer do the people have to suffer under the, 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 the aggressive sometimes and high-minded attitude of members of the bar. We can now know what needs to be done. How do you use the courts? How do you get a judge to sign an order to make your world a better place for yourself and for your children? Did I answer your question or did I go too far? Mm -hmm. No, it's perfect and fantastic mission. Very, very good mission and empowering. No, because like there are times like, you know, when uh, just even a simple situation when uh, I, I know of a person who just, they, I guess what I'm saying is well, it's empowering that you said that if we know information, the right information, especially when it comes to laws, then we don't have to um, just succumb or be subjugated or just accept whatever is being you know mandated to us whether it will be at work or we, whether it will be about personal things so it's really crucial that we once should learn what we have at hand and yeah as you were saying earlier since we are in this community in this country or wh wherever country that we are in if we know the you know the proceedings in in when we have where when we feel that some some we have been wrong then it's it's our responsibility to learn about it right and so you have these courses good and also i was just i just have a thought in my mind dr graves that when you i i listened to your videos and you said it's simple and so this could have been taught also in school right not just not just the law schools but even like primary schools, high school or secondary, and then in college, because it's basically, it's important. We deal with loss every day and every moment of our lives. So well, absolutely, absolutely. Yes. Let, let me say a couple of things there. And thank you for the opportunity. Uh, first off, you use the word responsibility. I like to use the word opportunity because we never had this before. Now we have the opportunity. And as more and more people sign up for my course, I get closer and closer to being able to start my publishing company because my publishing company is going to do two things. My publishing company is going to develop curriculum materials that start in the first grade. Oh. Where we teach children the fundamental principles of justice, not, not just how to win in court, but the oh, fundamental dear. principles of justice. What is a contract? What is... When I make a promise, if Susie promises Sally that, uh, you know, whatever, d d what does that mean? And when should a promise be enforceable and how should it be enforced? Those types of things we can teach children in first, second, third, fourth grades. Mm -hmm. then, then I also, when I have my publishing company, when, we, when enough people have my course, I'll be able to do that. Then we will have... I also have the trademark for the word justice. I, I don't have much, I don't have enough money to do this, but I don't know if you can see this very clearly, but these are some, some covers of the magazine that I, that I want to publish someday. Uh, and, and think about that. There is no magazine called justice. How can that be? Mm. 
There isn't. I own that word. I own that word. If you want to have a magazine or a newsletter or a periodical called Justice, they got to run it by me. So I want to do that with my publishing company. So we have this opportunity that never existed before. I can go on the internet and there's the New Jersey rules of evidence. Uh, what's this picture here? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now let's, let's go this. We can go to New Jersey. Oh, typing rules. While you're looking for that, Dr. Graves, I just want to say that it's awesome. It gave me a smile that you're going to do some courses for the little ones, because like there are many parents who are coming together, they will even hire uh, a teacher just to do homeschooling. And then there's a, another group here in New Jersey that they're going, they really established their homeschool program and they're going to start in January. So, and now, uh, and they're, they're going to uh, teach constitution as part of the school for the little ones. Okay. But let me, let me speak to that if I may briefly. Okay. Uh, the Constitution does not tell me how to enforce the Constitution. You see, here again, I'm on the internet. I, I, I could be somebody that never finished high school, but I have a computer. And here are the rules governing the courts of the state of New Jersey. These are the, this is the official rules. Mm -hmm. It's not hidden anymore. You don't have to pay thousands of dollars to buy a set of books for the law office. You don't need a law office. You don't need a lawyer. You need my course. Mm -hmm. So what I, what I hope, hopefully will either sell enough of these courses that I can start a corporation, which I'm going to have to have at least 16 or 20 people and salaried. I have, to, I have to pay them, of course, and provide an office for them. Or an investor will come along and the investor will understand what my mission is and realize that, that this is a golden opportunity for us to not only educate children in the schools, but to educate the public with my Justice Magazine and my, my website, which is justicemagazine.com, and all the various opportunities that the internet has presented for us to empower the people to control their government, control corporations that are that are overreaching and out of control, control their school board, their city council, control their next door neighbor, you know, control Aunt Susie if she's harming somebody, uh, get their children back that are being taken away unfairly and unjustly. All of these opportunities belong to the people now because of this. That I never existed before this has never been done before and i get told over and over and over again by people there's nothing like it anywhere else now an average eighth grader can learn how to use the courts in a weekend fantastic thank you very much and thank you for being with us okay and i'll um i'll pass it on to roy and then steve and then we'll continue thanks chris uh hi frederick um, I'm a, a bit different from the others because I've had a, over a, a hundred court cases. I'm just curious because with, uh, I'm looking big into at the moment the uh, UCC and common law. Is that something that's covered in this? Roy, no. Because the UCC is what we call substantive law. Uh, common law is court is judge-made law, appellate court opinions, goes all the way back to, you know, the Magna Carta and all of that. But what I teach is the missing element, the, the procedure and evidence. You see, that's it. That's the part that's missing. I can, you could, I could go into court and say, well, Your Honor, uh, UCC uh, 9.04 or whatever says that my client should win. And the judge could say, so what? And I could say, but this is what the law is. But you see, I have to be able to present evidence. I have to know how to write pleadings. 
how to file, how to state a cause of action. Let me go to that real quick. But this is what you see if you have the course. It's the main menu. Here's one of one of the many classes, a whole bunch of classes in the main menu. There you go. See it scroll. Are you seeing this okay? Yes, indeed, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna goes all the way down to trial preparation, even appeals. So then I'm going to go up here to the top, and I recommend people start here. But we're going to jump ahead for because it's today, and here's causes of action. And over here, I click the contents menu, and I can find a cause of action. There's one called breach of contract. Now, breach of contract is a common law thing. But how do you enforce a breach of contract? You can't just go in and say, well, he, he breached my contract. He owes me money. I win. And they'll ignore you. But if you know how to write proper pleadings, and you, you know how to file motions, none of which is rocket science. Now, you're, you're doing something, and this information that my course provides, apparently nobody's ever thought of doing this before, which amazes me. I, it makes me so happy I get to be the one that's doing it. But it's about procedure and evidence. You can have the law on your side. You can have the facts on your side. But if you don't know how to present your case, if you don't know how to get admissible evidence into the record to win your case, it, it doesn't matter. The law is not self-operating. Put it that way. The Constitution, whether it's here or Ireland, or I have people have the course in Ireland. Uh, it could be Spain, Taiwan, wherever, New, New Zealand, Nova Scotia. There are rules of procedure and there are rules of evidence and if you try to win your case and you you don't know how to get evidence admitted into the record doesn't make a difference if the law is on your side so the course covers procedure and evidence and that's why we call it how to win in court because that's exactly what it is how to win in court not what is the law or what are my rights it's it's how do I enforce my rights? I like to tell people this, Roy. If people talk about, and I've been looking at this for you know 25 years. People have been emailing me and telling me, well, so and so violated my rights, my constitutional this and that and the other thing. And then I try to explain to people, if you you can know what your rights are, you can know every right you have, you can know where to look it up in the Constitution or in the statutes. But if you don't know how to enforce your rights, you don't have any rights. And that may sound peculiar. You, certain things are promising you rights. But if you can't enforce the rights, effectively, you don't have them. So that's what the course provides that's never been done before. We're, we're teaching people the procedure and the rules of evidence and how to use those rules effectively and tactically and strategically and and putting it out there in a way that an eighth grader can can learn this in a weekend it's that easy and like when you're in court because i know when you're you know you have if you do use a lawyer and you're on the stand the lawyer is asking you the questions that you've are already kind of rehearsed or whatever but when you're not using a lawyer and you're on the stand but yet you want to get your message across how is it done in that instance well you just testify just testify and the other thing that we we emphasize in the course is make your make your record in writing put all this in writing before you get to court in in fact in television you see we, we get the idea that cases are won in the courtroom i have 35 years of experience winning cases and i can tell you cases are won in my office, doing the research and writing the pleadings and writing the motions. And then if I have to go to a hearing, I've already made my I've already made my point. I've already won. And if I have to go to trial, I probably made a mistake if I had to go to trial or I didn't have a winnable case in the first place. But if I have to go to trial, I already have my evidence. I, I've already I've already gotten all the evidence that I need to win at trial. I don't wait till I go to trial to get the evidence. And, and I know what I have to present 
and 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 then I win. <laughs> Winning is easy with jurisdictionary. And like when there's an affidavit, because uh, I've had cases in Ireland and Poland, and uh, you know there's an affidavit that's kind of a sworn affidavit of what uh, when they're coming after me, and then I have to respond to that. Um, like I've had a case where they couldn't answer my affidavit because I had them, but yet I still lost. Is there ways of like when you're doing things like affidavit or yes, yeah? Can you see my screen? I can indeed. Yeah, yeah, I can see affidavit. Okay, there. affidavits are not pleadings. Affidavits tell the truth. Mm. Okay, they are not pleadings. They are not motions. They're not legal arguments. They're powerful when they're used properly. And they're excellent to, I could say, beef up your pleadings, motions, petitions, demands, memoranda, and other documents. But they're not pleadings. People don't know this. It, it amazes me. But it makes me super happy that I get to help people understand what a pleading is. You see here? Now we're going to talk about pleadings, where the battle begins, where you say what you must prove. And it works. It's, it's, it's this. May I say this to you, wonderful people? All of this has been hidden from you for 6,000 years. If you go back to the time of, I think Job is the oldest book in the Bible, and without getting, I'm not going religious on you, but. The way people figure it is as far back as we can figure out that the, the people, civilized people who know how to read and write and have a language, go back at least 6,000 years. There was a carpenter whose birth we're going to celebrate day after tomorrow. And again, not being religious, just saying this is, this is history. Uh, and all over the world, they're going to celebrate this, this baby's birth. And when he got older, he actually is alleged to have said, Dr. Luke, in his uh, epistle, in chapter 11, verse 52, that this carpenter says, Woe to you lawyers, for you've hidden the keys of knowledge. That was 2,000 years ago. Woe to you lawyers, for you've hidden the keys of knowledge. It's in your Bible. And you, you, you read read uh, Charles Dickens, read Bleak House, read Hard Times, read almost any of his novels, and you'll find in those novels there are these people who are just, most of them just dastardly people called lawyers who, who manipulate the law and manipulate the courts to make money for themselves and have hidden the keys of knowledge. All of this has been hidden. Everything that I teach you in this course has been hidden for 6,000 years. And I just made up my mind, by golly, we're not going to let it be hidden anymore. We're going to tell people what you've been denied so that you yourselves can go to court, whether you have a lawyer or don't have a lawyer, and you'll know what to do and what it takes to get justice. And that's the bottom line. That's what this is all about. And like uh, I'm coming across, it, it, it's on the stuff I'm studying at the moment, but Black Law's Dictionary, is that something that's worth looking at? Because I know that it's broken down into all uh, the actual terms of what each thing means. Because when we get a letter, whether it says, are you the owner of this vehicle and things like that, that there's different meanings to everything. Is that something that people should look into or are we going in, in too deep and don't need to be looking at things like that? Well, I have the second edition of Black's Law Library, uh, Black's Dictionary, and uh, I don't know, 35 years of practice, I never look at it. It's a dictionary. It's not the law. Webster's is a dictionary, too. Uh, they're not the law. Uh, people talk about Bouvier's uh, maxims, and you look at some of those maxims, and about half of them aren't really valid maxims. It's something somebody thought was a maxim. And, but you see, what the law says 
is what the law is. What the law says is what the law is. Here, the, the, here's the here's the rules of of procedure in New Jersey courts. Uh, this is the law. This isn't a this isn't some dictionary publishing company. And and even in some of this, you'll find where words are defined. Now, if it's just a matter of looking up a word to see what it means, that's that's, that's fine. You can tell the judge, well, law. Black says that, uh, you know, this is what a contract is. But it's not the law. It doesn't win the case. What wins the case is, over here, pleadings, motions, and and hearings. Pleadings, motions, and hearings. Stating what you must prove, and then using discovery. Go over here to get that class. Uh, where to go? Where to go? Where to go? Where to go? There. Use this class, discovery, finding facts that lead to admissible evidence, and then moving the court. And that's another class, motions and hearings. And all of this is easy to understand, but apparently it, it really... <laughs> It really does kind of blow my mind when I think, my gosh, this planet's been around a long time. The, this, my country, United States, has been here for over 200 years. And all of this that's, that an eighth grader can learn in a weekend, all of this has been hidden from the people so the, um, uh, so the bar lawyers can make more money. That's, that's, that's what we're all about, Roy. Yeah. When hidden from you so that bar lawyers can make more money, just like Charles Dickens writes about in all his novels. Well, I, I'm looking at what you're showing me there now, and I can see the different things that I'm reading. And it's actually in a, I would call it a proper English uh, way of understanding. I read it. I understand it straight away. I've read books on tort, on civil litigation and everything. And they're so complex. Like <laughs> I read them because I feel like I need to read them to try to help me while I'm in court. But the reality is I probably was just after wasting the whole time reading the book because it's gone in one ear and out the other. Whereas I can see what you're doing there. And like just for those that go into court, because I, I understand you create everything. Um, like you're, you're basically writing down the whole situation before you go in. So you're technically trying to win it before you actually put your foot on the in, inside the courtroom. It, are you allowed have, say, like, say, a book of that stuff that when you're asked something that you can have it handy? Are you allowed that? Because sometimes, you can, especially for someone that's not used to court, they can get flustered and, you know, they, nervous because they're not used to that kind of thing is it something that you can have it when you're asked that you can just kind of look at it or are you are not allowed to have something handy that just kind of gives you a quick reference well it's a good question uh they don't they don't like that because of course the other guy he's gonna he's gonna cry about it he's gonna get all upset about it and make a big stink and you know and try to you know i'm being delayed i need to be somewhere we need to get this over with you know move along all that kind of nonsense but i in 35 years, I never went to court without my rule book. And in a big, thick rule book that I got was, I'd buy them about every every other year. So I had the latest ones. And the, the one I had was probably an inch and a half, almost two inches thick. And that's, that's another thing, how this all got started. I grabbed my rule book one time, and I realized only the first 30 pages in the rule book were dog-eared. 30 pages out of 300. That was all I had ever had to use to win over and over and over again. I won. And because it, there's not that much to it. So yes, you can bring the book and hopefully if you have to, you can, you can, uh, you can go to the book, but, but let me show you this other class over here. It's pretty darn important class. If I can find it for courtroom, even though I created this, it's gotten so big. I, I can't keep up with what all's here. It's so much, so much is here. Here we go. Courtroom objections. Okay. What, what this class teaches you is it, first of all, you're preserving your right to appeal. That's extremely powerful. And that's all explained. But what this course teaches you is there's a common sense to objections, like objection hearsay. 
if if the other side brings a witness uh, who says that Aunt Susie said the car was going 100 miles an hour, objection, Your Honor. Aunt Susie's not here. I can't cross-examine Aunt Susie. Therefore, by definition, it's hearsay, and that we're not let that going. We're not going to let. Actually, what we're going to do is, we're, if we're really thinking quickly, we're not even going to let the witness answer. When the lawyer asks his client a question, we're not going to let the the, the, the the We'll never hear the answer. Objection, or calls for speculation. Anyway, there's a handful of these things that once you get the common sense into your brain. You don't need the book. You really don't. Same thing on the rules of evidence. Let me go to that. Uh, evidence rules in general. Um, evidence is the stuff that wins lawsuits. But down here, and um, let me let me just jump right to it if I here categories. Here's what I wanted. Okay. Each of these categories has a common sense principle about it what a presumption is what is relevance what is a privilege it's not hard to understand it's something new but then none of you knew what a gigabyte was 30 years ago so now you know now you know what a gigabyte is pretty soon you'll know what hearsay is but you learn these by category so it's right here you learn more quickly and better understand how to apply them to win. So once you understand the reasoning behind the rules of evidence, once you understand the reasoning behind courtroom objections, and once you understand the reasoning of what we call causes of action, then all this fits together. I'm not trying to, sh to, to shine a light up on myself but let me say that i also used to write magazine articles for i did a lot of sailing and i wrote magazine articles for a bunch of sailing magazines including yachting and i wrote a book on navigation and the editor of yachting magazine if you've heard of it i know they sell it in england and ireland uh, he did a book review on my book and I can almost quote it exactly. He said, he said, Graves makes complex things ridiculously easy to understand. So what this course is, it's the result of my having this unique ability. And, and I can't, listen, if I had to make a basket from half court on a basketball court, if I had to make it or die, I'd die. I couldn't, couldn't get a basket. Uh, there's lots of things I cannot do, but I can take a complicated thing and exp and take it all apart in its pieces and figure out how to explain it to you in a way that is ridiculously easy to understand. And that's what I've done. And, and like, do, do you have um, a book? I, I'll explain just me personally. Uh, I mean, I get plenty of PDF books and everything, and I just don't enjoy. I find it hard to read. I prefer having a physical book where I'm making notes and everything. Is a lot of the stuff in the book covered in this, or do you have to have the course to to all the items that you've got there? Well, I don't have a book. There's no. And I'll, tell you, and I'll tell you why. Uh, when you have a, when you print books, then you have a bunch of books sitting around. I did have something. There's a little thing here called the Easy Guide. Uh, this little class here used to be. I used to have this all printed out on a little thing. I had it laminated, and I take them around and and hand them out at the law libraries. But it, the course completely outstrips what this is, and. I keep making changes like this class on affidavits. I just added that two months ago. Now, if I had a bunch of books that were printed, I'd have to throw the old books away and have another batch of books printed. But you can do this with a tablet, Roy. There's Amazon makes a, an Amazon Fire, seven inch Amazon Fire tablet that you can put in your hip pocket. It costs $49. 
and and I've done this. If you look at the size of the of the type and the fonts, you can do this with a smartphone. Turn the phone sideways, and you can learn the course with a smartphone. You don't have to be sitting in front of a computer, which I agree sometimes is very tedious. You know, mm-hmm. having having sat in front of a computer for decades, I agree with you. But if I have a little tablet, I can take it with me. I can go sit out in the backyard. I can take it with me to the courthouse. Okay. And now I have everything I need right here, and it's super easy. Like we go here, we go to uh, oh. How about let's let's jump down here. I, one I like a lot is is uh, uh, let's try circumstantial evidence. Then I go over here. Well, not that's not a good one. Uh, uh, just a quick one because you might have it actually. Um, because we're going through crazy times all over the world, and there's a lot of mandates is what they're kind of pushing. Have you anything on that that people if they're you know. Getting no, fine, find no. no be, here's here's the in, another interesting. It's this. This is all so peculiar. I, I'm. I just. It amazes me that I get to do this. What it, what turns out, Roy, is the rules, like the rules of evidence, for example. It doesn't matter what the case is about. Could be about a mandate. Could be about a, a foreclosure. Could be a breach of contract. Could could be a murder case. Could be a, a case of breaking and entering, theft, criminal, whatever. It doesn't matter. Rules of evidence are the same. No matter what the case is about. And if you don't, if you don't know the rules of evidence, when you could have learned it in in about, I'll take you about, I don't know, two hours. Maybe three hours to learn the rules of evidence. Why are people going to court? allowing somebody to push them around, paying a lawyer who may or may not be on your side, when it only takes two or three hours to learn the rules of evidence that apply in every case, whether it's a vaccine, mandate, doesn't matter what it is. Fraud, no matter what the case is about, you go to court, rules of evidence control, and they're easy to learn. So I guess what I'm way I'm trying to answer your question is it doesn't matter what the case is about. So instead of me trying to to have a special class for people that are challenging a mandate or a special class for people that are trying to do this and the other thing, there are not enough hours in the day for me to do that. So what I give you applies to every case. Okay. Perfect. Listen, uh, I I don't want to hog the stage. I'd pass it on to Steve. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roy. Okay. Wow. Um, Well, Roy asked a lot of the things I was uh, kind of thinking about. But uh, just to put it in perspective, it's one course for 249 or each topic is a course? No, no. No, it's it's just I'm trying to get this where where people can can afford it. Yeah, okay. So, and then when you take the course, is it online videos you have access to for the rest of your life, or? Here I go. I'll I'll get to that page. I'll figure it out here in a minute. Bear with me. No, okay, look over here. Everything you need. Here's what's in the main menu. All these things are in the main menu. All of this. And then there's a reference menu. And you have all of this in the reference menu. All you need to win. And here, we even have a thing on rules of order. There's a video class. Tells what's in the video class. How to read the law. All of these, when you go come to the website as a visitor, this is what you see. So you see how to file defenses, all that's in here, how to file a firm to defend, how to bite back, how defendants fight back. That's all included. And then when you are in the course, go to that page, then you have a different layout and then you have the main menu and with all of this in the main menu, then you have the reference menu and these things are in the reference menu. Then you also have the extras menu. You got all these things. And so it, I had to get it organized in somehow that would be easy for people to use. So 
That's how that works. So we go back to the main menu and and let's go for the, here's the two and a half hour audio seminar. And you go down here and well here I'll click on contents. And I could click this, you, you wouldn't hear it because it would be in here, but but when I click this right here, you can download this as an MP3 to your download folder and play it on the iPhone or iPad or whatever. And each of these things in the audio classroom is there. But it's all included. And it's been 249 for 15 years. I never in, never increased the price. Your causes of action. So you have all these. Battery, breach of contract, breach of fiduciary, conspiracy, conversion, good sold, injunction, negligence. All included. No extra charge. I want Here's the guy, here's the thing, guys. God's been very good to me. Uh, I've been working at this 25 years, and we're okay. But I, I want to change the world. Is that is that too much to ask? No, I mean it's a perfect time. I think everyone should take this course. I'm going to take it. But I, I guess I'm, the, you know, just to continue in the same vein, if, if I sign up for it, it's, is it a sequential course or it's just a bunch of stuff I can oh click on and, and do? No. Oh, please don't. No. What I want you to do, let me, let me go to the beginning. See where it says, this is the first thing you see when you sign in. Okay. Yeah. All right. Start here. And then it says, please read everything on this page. <laughs> okay. Please do that. I want you to look at this. If you can, I'll, I'll kind of read this a little bit if you don't mind. Sure. Okay. In 35 years, I've argued in one cases in front of lots of judges and against lots of lawyers. And I want you to understand that. I don't hate anybody. And getting emotional about this just gets in the way. Okay. Uh, but some lawyers are crooked. And some judges are biased. But if you will start at the beginning, there's this other thing we were talking about. Every kind of case, doesn't matter what kind of case. Okay? No matter what the game may be, the rules of court are pretty much the same, state or federal, no matter where you are or what the case is about. That includes New Zealand, Australia, Ireland, England, the Isle of Man, I mean, I, there, I have people using the course all these places. So I want you to go through all this first thing where I explain this to you, okay? And then if you scroll way on down here, what it, what, it, what it ends up telling you about the menus, takes a little bit of time how to get into the course and how to actually advertise the course, and I'll pay you for that, okay? So what I want you to do you see here it says start a note notebook, have a notebook, keep notes, but then go to the next class. Start with the next link. You go to the main menu, then you go to why so easy. As you go through each of these classes, we 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 strengthen the foundation of your knowledge. We don't try to we don't try to teach you how to build a race car till we teach you how you know how a bolt works. You know, if you don't know how to mm. build, okay, you need to know how a bolt works. Then there's the easy guide. And then there's planning for battle. We want you to do it in this in this order, just like in the main menu. Then there are court orders. After all, that's what we're after, isn't it? A court, court, a court order? The goal of all legal proceedings is a court order. And so you study this class to, because nothing else matters. And then after court orders, you do the five and a half hour video introduction. Don't jump ahead to it. Do those first few classes. They won't take long. You can do all of those in about an hour and a half. And then take this. This is broken down into various uh, things. In fact, I could almost make, I don't know if this will work. I could try it. I'm going to click the projector icon. And I'm going to click this little start button. Is it running?
Is it running? It is. Yeah, it's, yep. Yep, we can hear it. Yep. Okay. So then. This is jurisdiction. We teach people how to win in court. In production. So tell us what we're going to look at in this tutorial. First of all, we want to emphasize that the key to winning is confidence. This is true whether it's a football team or whether you're playing golf or, or even in your personal relations with other people. When you have confidence, the probability of your winning is greatly increased. But when it comes to winning a lawsuit, the key to confidence is knowledge. And then it goes on and on. So if, if we go back to we scroll down here, we could we can it goes in more in depth. So we talk about well let's see here. Cross claim, third avoiding the answer, motion to strike, motion to dismiss, motion for more definite statement. You can do that one, see. And, and then this will be you do these things, and then when you get to the end of the five hour five hours of video clips. All right, now once again. These are the motions that we file so that we don't have to file an answer. A motion to strike, a motion to dismiss, and a motion for a more definite statement. So, yes. Then after the video, there's an audio, which you can carry around with you, which is actually a transcription of a seminar we did in Houston, Texas some years ago. Then we talk about affidavits and how to, how to, how to tame lawyers. And if you do this in the order we present it, by the time you get down to how to con control judges and trial prep, you are one clever guy. You are dangerous. If, hopefully you have a good cause. You're trying to do something worthy and noble and honorable. But even if you're trying to pull a fast one on somebody, you'll be able to outsmart some of the best ones out there because... At least mm -hmm. half the lawyers I've met are dumber than a sack of hammers. So a lot of a lot of things start with a letter. You get a letter in the mail or a certified letter. Um, I have a family member that was uh, in a business, and the head of the LLC stole was uh, pilfering money, and it was a four partner LLC, and they they caught him, you know, they figured it out over 10 years. They estimated, I don't know, five or $6 million he had stolen. They lost the case. Um, and then, and then in the case, the head of the LSC who stole the money said, well, all four partners were getting cash in envelopes, which wasn't true. So the, my, the family members who lost now were hit with a tax bill on money they never received. Um, so to add in, uh, insult to injury, so they get a letter from a, a tax authority. Um, I mean, would this be something that this course could handle and they could do this without a lawyer on how to respond to this letter? Is that the first step properly responding to that letter? Well, that's a letter. What they would, the thing they want to do, the first thing they're going to work down here to is, is, uh, let me go up top. The letter said because of the money they received and didn't report. I heard that. I heard, owed... that. I heard that. Okay. 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 But in this planning, you go, first you, you're going to learn how to plan, know where you're going before you begin. So right now I've got a letter. A letter is not a pleading. A letter is not a legal document. It's not a court document. It, does, it has nothing to do with procedure or evidence. It might end up being evidence, but it's but it's not a legal document, as far as being a court paper. So what I would do is I would, if 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 I that was my client, I would start taking it apart and I'd start start planning. I'm going to plan to use discovery. I'm going to plan to make them tell me uh, who said, and how did that person who said know what they said. And where's the, where are the documents? Produce the documents. You allege all this. Produ produce what you're alleging. And I, I, I would go on to the offense. I, don't, I never operate from defense. We're not, we're not defendants. Even if, even if somebody's suing us, we're, we're not going to remain a defendant. See, here we go. Over here we go. Uh, where, is, where, is, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, 
<laughs> You'd think because I wrote this myself that I'd know where everything is. But <laughs> here we go. Defense tactics. I'm gonna fight back. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. This isn't a casual thing. This is not an argument. We're gonna win on the back porch with family members. This is a mechanical process. I like to emphasize that with people. It's a mechanical step-by-step -step process where you take each individual part of things. Here's an allegation number one. We don't we don't try to deal with five allegations at a time. Take each separate little allegation. So and so did this. You say so. Okay. How do you know that? Where's the, where's the evidence? And we go after them, hammer and tong. Okay. You allege that. Now you're going to have to prove that. And if you if you can't prove it. I'll be coming after you for money damages, and then you will pay me for all this trouble instead of me paying you. Wow. Okay. So, so but, but let's let's don't let's don't talk about specific case situations. Let's talk about this in general, if you will, because otherwise we'll end up going down a rabbit trail. And I'd I'd rather answer questions in general about how do you win in court? What is this really all about? What does the course include? And is it everything you need? Because I, I'm after 25 years. Now, 10 years ago, it wasn't. Five years ago, it probably wasn't. Now, it's pretty much everything you need. And if you learn this stuff and, and get it, think about it this way. It's not something to memorize. It's something to understand. It's a process. It's, it's a mechanical thing. It, it all fits together a certain way. And when, when, when this all begins to gel and you begin to see how it all fits together, you become a formidable opponent. I see. Would you say most of the people who take your course and have success do it on their own or with a lawyer? Some have had some have hired lawyers, but let's take a look at that for just a moment here. Let me go back to this thing here. And just quickly, I see renew for $89. Does that mean the original course expires after a certain amount of time? A year. If you okay. renew early for 89 But you see, the whole point of it is if people who will actually do this the way I asked them to do it, you don't need this for a year. This, this is not something you needed for a year. If you needed it for a year, you probably did something wrong or you, you just you didn't didn't actually sit down and make up your mind you're going to go through it. This is what real people are saying. This is this is an individual here, Tracy B. from Bellsville, Maryland. Here's somebody. He, he took on an attorney. He said even other attorneys in the gallery were talking about it. This Kathy from Huntersville, North Carolina. She didn't have a lawyer. Linda from Roswell, Georgia. She didn't. She won four motions yet. And, Wish she'd had tutorials a year ago. Here's Larry. One of his defendants wanted to settle immediately. He didn't have an attorney. Here's a criminal case. The guy won. He walked out of the courtroom. Knowing, here you go. Knowing I won without a lawyer. Philip from Albany, Georgia. Here's a guy who won $11,000. Ronaldo from... All of these people. Here's I love this one. <laughs> he two hundred sixteen thousand dollars. He went up against his employer for violating his copyright. He couldn't get a lawyer to take the case. Couldn't get a lawyer to take the case. They were all afraid to sue a corporation. Wow. He won two hundred sixteen thousand dollars on his own. Here's somebody that actually went up on appeal in the second district court in Florida without a lawyer. I'm not saying you shouldn't have a lawyer. If you've got money running out your ears, hire a lawyer, but make him work for you. Yeah. Yeah. Don't let it, don't let him be don't, and half of them will maybe more than half of them. They'll say, you know, well, I, I'll be the lawyer. You know. um, can I just want to touch on something we already Roy already touched on and your course yeah. covers everything there. And you said you don't really want to speak specifics, but if someone gets an email from their employer saying you have to do something or you're going to lose your job, what would what what section of your course would pertain to the way you what you would do with that email? 
Well, I, 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 what I would do is I'd make a copy of it. I'd make several copies of it and make sure I don't lose it. I'd print it out. I wouldn't just, and never rely on what's in your computer. I've had computers mm -hmm. just blow up, you know. I always back everything up. Uh, you by that you you would work your way down and you would have finished this class on planning and you would you would find out you you there's no point in going to court to argue something if the law is not going to be on your side can we agree about that yeah okay the only other the only time you might is when you were when you were determined to get the court to change the law and that you think you can find enough law or fundamental principles of common law to force the court to enter an order abolishing the law that is hurting you. Otherwise, you're wasting, why are you wasting the time? You're not going to win. Your opinion of what's right and wrong, nobody cares. The only opinion that matters is the opinion of appellate court justices that have already written and signed and entered uh, their, 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 their judgments Mm -hmm. in the public record so from your experience um you get an email like that and from your experience in general do is it worth going to court over i'd want to find out different things I, it would depend uh did i have a contract with my employer uh did i read the contract does that contract give me any ins or outs then i would look at the statutes in my state and I'd, I'd want to find out, well, what, what does the law in my state say about my right to work? Some states you don't have a right. In other states, you do. Gotcha. Uh, so gotcha. I'd, I'd want to know what's the law because, as I say, in Florida, they may have changed things recently, but the last time I checked in Florida, if you and I have a cafe and we – and. Billy Bob comes and Billy's working in the cafe and we decide we want Billy to wear a hairnet. And Billy says, well, that's not in our contract anywhere. And then I would say to Billy, well, Billy, you know, I don't care if it's in the contract. I don't want you to wear a hairnet. So can you come to work tomorrow? Wear the hairnet. And when Billy comes to work tomorrow and does not have a hairnet, he's fired. Hmm. And there's nothing you can do about it nothing but that's florida that may be different in new jersey or new york or connecticut or arizona mm. okay but it's my cafe now if if i try to have make somebody leave my cafe because the the skin color is a little darker than i like i can't do that because there's established law whether we like it or not, there is established law that was back in the 60s that says that if my business participates in, uh, you know, in, in inter interstate commerce, then I can't exclude anybody on the base of, base of race or color or various other things because there's a law that protects that person. But there's no law that protects a guy that won't wear a hairnet in my work you know in my store whatever that's too bad on you so the answer to your question may not be you know i can't give you a off off the cuff you know here's the solution everybody wins mm. uh oh can you guys hear me yeah i can hear you i can too we, we can't hear uh we can't hear Fred. Fred, we can't hear you. I think you muted. Dr. Graves, we can't hear you. Hmm. Hello. Oh, oh, we you we couldn't hear you for the last five minutes. So for five minutes. Well, three minutes. Three minutes. Okay, so you didn't hear about the hairnet? No, we did. Right after that, it, you went. Some, I think you clicked something by accident, and we couldn't hear what you were saying. Oh, okay. So you must have hit mute or something. Sorry about that. No worries. Um, okay, yeah. So I mean, obviously, it depends on um, 
that state statutes, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I, I mean, the same question, I guess, this is the same answer for children in school and they get there's some sort of thing that they have to do this or they can't do that. that. So I guess it's the same thing. You would, the courts would tell you, uh, I guess, um, you know, whatever section, but it depends on the statutes and the, the contract or whatever's been signed and stuff like that. Well, yeah, we, it depends on the law. We go, yeah, to court, okay. we go to court to enforce the law. That's what, that's why we're there. Okay. And if the law is not on my side, then let, let me back up a second. Okay, if the law is not on my side. When I was a little boy, I, I was born in 1943. Uh, my grandfather, we lived in Ohio. My, my grandfather took me to Florida when I was 11, my first trip. And we're going through Georgia. And there were water fountains that said colored. And there were water fountains that said white. And if you wanted to drink out of the white water fountain, you better not have a, a real good suntan. Because uh, Billy Bob, the sheriff, you know, who knows what he would do to you? Well, that's no longer the law. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you've got Brown versus Yeah, we can't hear you again. Can you hear us? Are you there? Yeah, you just went out. We couldn't hear your audio for uh, like uh, the last minute. I don't know what's happening. Okay, I'll start again. Yeah, Brown versus was the last thing we heard. Board of Education. Okay. Ples Plessy versus Ferguson and a whole bunch of other situations where somebody had the courage and the chutzpah and wouldn't back down and went to court and got a judge to sign an order saying that children with dark skin will go to school with white children if they want to. And that's the law today. And, and I suspect that it won't be too very long because before a, a controlling level appellate court judge is going to sign an order saying that either you can or cannot be fired for refusing to wear a mask. I don't know how that's going to turn out. But mm -hmm. I know I know that it's not going to change because of some politician. It's not going to change because we all wait till November to elect, you know, Harry and, yeah. and Susie. That's not going to change the world. The world mm. changes because people have the courage and the chutzpah to go to court and act, and do something. But now what I want you to understand is for the first time in the history of the world, you can do this without a lawyer never been possible. Miranda versus Arizona. We, we now have a Miranda warning. You, if you beat me up and make me sign a confession and you didn't give me a Miranda warning, I'll, uh, it'll be overturned on appeal because of Mr. Miranda, who didn't just let this happen to him. He went to court and got the court to change the law. But the people don't, it's like amazes me. The people in this world don't seem to understand if you want to change the law, you can you can wait and vote for some politician to do it for you. Or you can carry guns in the street. You can light torches. You can set fire to police cars. You, you can violate the, the rights of, of people who own stores and break into their stores and steal their stuff. You can parade in the streets. None of that does any good. I got you. Or you can go to court and be a, a grown up and be irresponsible and put on your big boy pants and study my course that only takes a weekend. Maybe it might take somebody four or five days instead of just two. But go, get the course. It's not expensive. Study the course. Go to court. And, and whether you win or lose, you're at least going to get a chance to make your argument on the public record and if if people ref just won't do it oh i i don't want to do that let somebody else do that well then shame on them 
You know, if, yeah. if, if you're not going to go fight for what you believe in, let's fight with words. Let's don't fight with swords and guns and bombs. Let's spill ink instead of blood. But if you're not going to fight for what for what you think is, is needs to be fixed in the world, then shut your face. Who cares what you think? Go to court and fight for it. And I'll give you the tools and weapons you need. Everything you need is in this course to go and win. And, I, and here are here's lists. Here's over and over. All these people did the same thing. Mm. And we've yeah, got. No, I mean. And, and yeah. I'm sorry. Let me just. Let me just one little bit more. I forgive me. I mean, you you guys are different. I'm putting you out of the category here. But I get emails from people that complain about all kinds of things about how the government this, the government the that, and and they don't realize that. This afternoon, I'll go to the grocery store and I'll get a loaf of bread. I didn't have to grow the wheat or grind the, you know, and the bread might have been made a thousand miles from here because we have a system of government that is absolutely wonderful. But we have people that are not doing what's good, that are running the government. And then we have a public who refuse, who just sit on their hands and complain. Now, because yeah. of what I've done, you, you have no excuse. No more complaining. Okay. Sorry to interject there, but just based on that, because I know in Poland, it's been confirmed to me during criminal cases, somebody that was actually doing a load of criminal cases, he was losing when he knew he should have won. And he was advised, we've been, basically, we've been told to do that. And I know that that happens in a lot of countries. Whichever political party is in office owns the judges. So, like, when when you know the judge is corrupt, and unfortunately, it's riddled around the world. Like, is is it that they have, that you kind of, you ring fence it so much that they can't go against you? It always has been riddled. That fellow whose birth we're celebrating day after tomorrow, the 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 high priest, I'm sorry, the, the chief judge of the court of Israel, the chief judge of Israel set out to murder him. It's in your book. Read the Bible. Corruption's nothing new. Read Hard Times by Charles Dickens. Read Bleak House by Charles Dickens. Find out what it there's nothing new. The 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 beauty in this world, my friends, is that there are from time to time in various generations, there are individuals who have the courage to stand up for what is right and make a record by going to court and changing the world for the rest of us, making the world better, knocking down bad people. You know, every case I won, there was a lawyer on the other side. I didn't win because I was a lawyer. I won because I knew how to make a record and I knew how to make that judge understand at every stage of the proceedings. You rule against me, pal, and I'll take you up on appeal and then you will be embarrassed and this will be reversed. I had to appeal cases and I won. One, one appeal, the, the appellate court answered my appeal in four days. That's unthinkable. And they told this judge, no, you will do what Graves wants you to do. And that, that judge was thoroughly corrupt. I don't put up with it. Too many people died for my client's right to be heard and make a record. People, young people climbed out of those amphibious vehicles on the beach at Normandy and got all shot up by machine guns from the Germans. Don't don't even, you know, don't get me started. And you want to talk about Poland? How about the day I was born in April 1943? They were still dragging people out of their homes in, in Poland and shooting them in the streets. Women and children and children were crawling down inside of outhouses to hide, getting down in the poop to hide from the, the Nazis. And they didn't have court. They didn't have due process. They didn't have how to win in court without a lawyer. They didn't have an internet. And now you do. You have this power now. Use it for good. Uh, okay, so um, I hear you. I hear you. I mean, the things are corrupt, but things are better than they used to be. So, um, you know, uh, there's a question from the audience before we wrap it up, and I give it to Grace. Um, if you, I don't know if you're going to want to answer this, but it's the question is: is is the jab mandate a law? I don't know. 
I don't know. But I know I know that nothing will change about the jab mandate until a judge picks up is is forced to pick up a pen and sign an order one way or the other. It's not going to happen from the White House. And and let's leave it with this. I want people to understand something. all of this has been hidden from you. What the carpenter said 2000 years ago is still true. The lawyers are hiding the truth from you about what this is all about, how it all works, and you shouldn't put up with it anymore. But if, if, if you if you can't get a judge to pick up a, a pen and sign an order making things the way they're supposed to be, then they're going to continue to be the way they are. The courts have power over the White House. The courts have power over the legislature. The courts have power over Congress. Congress does not have power over the courts. That's en- That ought to be enlightening for all of you. The White House cannot tell the Supreme Court what to do, but the Supreme Court can tell the White House what to do. And that's the way it is, and that's the way it ought to be, and that's why we ought to thank Almighty God that we live in the United States of America and we ought to use this course that I've created to stand up and make the United States of America a safe place for the children. All right. I like it, man. <laughs> so so um, I plan to take the course and I'll pass you back to Grace. And uh, thanks for your time. And it's been very interesting. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Graves. Um, So then to all our audience, keep in mind, we the people. And now, as Dr. Graves said, this is not just a responsibility, but an opportunity that's, yeah, for some of us know that many things have been hidden, but now things are surfacing and we are being empowered. And there's no course like this anywhere in the world. So here it is. And Dr. Graves, any more last few words, announcement that you want to say? I guess I should say this, that I get emotional about this because I think about all those little tiny children that were murdered the day I was born because they did not have what the people today now have because of my course. But let's don't be angry with people Let's be angry at the darkness. Let's shine some light in the darkness. But darkness never gets us anything. Anger doesn't get us anything. Violence just gets more violence. But here is our opportunity to make peace with words. Uh Oh, you disappeared again. Your audio disappeared. (laughs) We can't hear you, Dr. Graves. Well, I'm sorry it's coming and going like that, but I'm just saying let's let's make peace with words. You know, let's get rid of the violence. Violence doesn't change anything. Being angry isn't going to change anything. Condemning the darkness gets us nothing. Lift a candle, shine some light, share this course with the world, and have the world use this course to make the world safe for the children. Amazing. Thank you so very much. And yes, to all of us here, wherever you are, all we need to do is to step up, step up for ourselves. And yes, everything is for the children. Thank you. And we're going to upload this in BitChute and, and, Quant- and Rumble and in all different platforms. Have a good day. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Grace.